Definitely a special time of year. It's Christmas time and it, the, the nice vibes is in the air and I know people still have concerns, especially as we discovered, you know, the fifth case of the Omicron variant this week. And, you know, we also launched the booster campaign last week. So I know people have lots of questions and we're going to we're gonna continue that dialogue right here on the Now Morning Show and hopefully be able to alleviate some of your fears and some of your concerns this morning. We're having a chat with research microbiologist and immunologist Dr. Swinburne. Augustine. Good morning to you, Doc. I know it's not your first time on the show, but welcome back. Good morning. Um, thank you for having me back. It's a pleasure to do so. All right. So people have lots of concerns and lots of questions, especially as we, you know, they the government announced the uh, decision to give booster shots. We also have the mixing of the vaccines that people have some concerns about. So I, I just want to get some information from you, Doc. Hopefully you can alleviate some concerns. Uh, when it comes to the, the WHO World Health Organization approved vaccines, they're saying now that we can mix vaccines and it will be okay. Um, first of all, I I'm curious as to if we had 94% um, efficacy when it comes to the, the, the vaccines, why do we need a booster in the first place? So <clears throat> the reason for that is simply immunological. So when you first get, there's something called the anamnestic response, meaning when you get your first exposure, the um, antibodies that you, the first antibodies that attack the foreign organism like SARS is the IgM, immunoglobulin M. It's a big antibody. It's a uh, it's not a specialist like others. It's like a generalist. It goes around and it would pick up and destroy the um, organism. The second antibody, and the one that's very important for us, is immunoglobulin G. That starts about five days, seven days into the infection, and it ramps up after your second exposure. It keeps the immunological memory the, the second exposure, you find a big spike in, in antibody production and called the clonal expansion theory. So you have a, a lot of it, but it starts to go down. After about 56 days, the antibody effect will start to wane. It starts to go down. So we need, and they've noticed that studies have shown that about six months the, the waning starts to happen, right? So the booster shot brings it up, back up to a very high level. Because think about it, every time you, when you get infected, whether you're vaccinated or not, it takes about a week to two weeks for your immune system to ramp back up. That gives the virus, especially one like Omicron that is, 70 times more effective at infecting the upper respiratory tract. It gives it 70 times more advantage over its predecessors. So you don't want two weeks or week to, to build immunity and to fight the virus. You want it to be there when you, when you get infected so that you don't end up getting severely sick, hospitalized, or dying. Right. So as you mentioned, the Omicron variant, I'm curious as to, as to, you know, the effects of the variant, how concerned we should be. You said it's 70% more effective at basically messing up your, your, your lungs and, and, your, and affecting your body negatively. Yes. So what is concerning about the variant, and it's, it, it has created a series of concerns for policymakers, for healthcare and frontline workers, and for the public in general. Yeah. There are approximately 50 mutations in the genome of Omicron. 30 of those, about 30 of those are in the spike protein. Why the spike protein? Because that is the protein that we are protected against in almost all of the vaccine. mRNA, Johnson & Johnson, all of the vaccines that we have. 
So it's trying to change so that the vaccines that we have are non-effective. That is concerning because it will throw us back into lockdowns if it is able to escape the the vaccines. So that is one of the major concerns that we have with Omicron. so then be honest with me and level with me here. Is vaccination our only way out then? If this, if this virus is now uh, transforming itself to be able to fight against the vaccines that we have created to fight the virus, how do we get out of this cycle? Since last year, May, about that time, I wrote two newspaper articles. One for Image Magazine in Dominica and the other one for the World Post that... Um, former Jamaican ambassador to the United Nations, um, Ambassador Ward um, runs. And the title of this was The Way Out of the Pandemic for Dominica and for the Caribbean. And in there, I stated categorically that the vaccines are the only way out for us because it helps us build our defenses against the virus. But what's important about those vaccines is that one of the very important features is that once you vaccinated, it is hard for the virus to mutate inside of you if you vaccinated. So let's just say if we reach herd immunity in Trinidad, in Dominica and the rest of the Caribbean and the world, which is about 90% of the population being vaccinated, then it will be harder to to get variants, number one. Number two, it will be harder to spread because if 80, 90% of the population is vaccinated, then it is very hard for there to be community spread because those 20%, the 10% unvaccinated people, they're not all congregated in the same place. Right. They are different parts of, of Trinidad. So it's like putting a hundred marbles in a jar, a big jar, and 90 of them are red and 10 of them are blue. If I blindfolded you and you shook that jar, you are more likely to come up with a red marble because there are 90 of them. So that, that is the, the, the thinking that if many people are vaccinated, 90% or so are vaccinated, then it is much more likely that you'll meet another vaccinated person. You can't really spread it and you, you, you're not getting sick. So Doctor- that's why I think vaccination is important. Right, but Doc, are there any examples of places that have achieved herd immunity as yet? There are some places, um, Israel and some others that have reached there, but that is one of the reasons that they found, okay, we, there were still infections in yeah. vaccinated people, although it was not serious. But what... Um, the finding is that, especially with Omicron, and where it is affecting us, it is in the upper respiratory tract, in the bronchial tubes, right, that leads down into the lungs. Alpha, I mean, Alpha, Delta, and the other um, variants, they actually infected the lung tissue itself, where you're exchanging oxygen for carbon dioxide in, in the alveoli, right? But the good news about Omicron is that it is very, very slow, about 15 to 20% slower at infecting the lung tissue itself, but 70% more effective at the upper respiratory tract, which is a little less damaging than the lung tissue itself. All right. Well, I want to thank you so much for joining us this morning and for sharing this bit of information with the public. And hopefully some people have a better understanding of why it is we need that booster shot, why we need to continue getting vaccinated and make sure that we uh, achieve that herd immunity status. Thank you so much for joining us this morning, Dr. Augustine. You're very welcome. And I wish everyone, all your listeners throughout Trinidad and the Caribbean, 
a healthy, safe, and enjoyable Christmas and holiday season. And same to you, Doc. Take care. My pleasure. All right, that's Dr. Swinburne, Swinburne Augustine. A uh, research microbiologist and immunologist telling us a little bit about the science behind, you know, why we need more vaccinations, why we need to get to that herd immunity status, and how we can achieve a, you know, safer environment, a safer population. And I hope that you guys continue to go out there and, and get your vaccine, whether you think it's mandatory or not. Let's take a quick break and come back with more inside in our morning show. Stay tuned.